the waves of life. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on water to go to Jesus. Peter stepped out of the ship with the goal of getting to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He had a goal, but he was distracted. In life, sometimes I find myself in the same situation as Peter. I let the chaos around me, the waves of life, cause confusion, skepticism, and doubt in my mind when I need to keep my eyes on my goals. The effect of skepticism and doubt is compromised. We alter the plans we had in the beginning and wonder if we are even capable of getting to our goals. I've always loved going to the beach, watching the waves and listening to them, and watching their altitude degrade as they roll ashore is calming to me. The ways of life are different. They bring confusion, skepticism, and doubt. The summer right before my senior year is when the ways of life seem to have been coming at me full force. My family was facing a lot of hardships, and on top of that, I was getting ready to make big decisions for my future. Just to name of a couple of things that were going on, I was getting ready to make big decisions about college, and I had readings and papers to write over the summer for AP classes. My sister Jasmine was getting ready to move out and get married. We've always been really close, so I was taking it hard. My older brother Jonathan has Crohn's, a chronic inflammatory disease in the intestines, and epilepsy, a seizure disorder. He was having a flare-up, and it was giving us all a scare. My mom has been a single parent since my dad passed in 2008, so she'd been tired because she was working two jobs to pay for Jasmine's wedding, get the bills paid in our home while caring for my brother all by herself. My oldest brother Julius tried to help, but he had a family of his own to take care of. Seeing our mom tired made us feel bad. I worried because she worried. I usually played AAU basketball every summer, but there was so much going on, I wasn't able to play. Basketball was my passion and is what I used as an outlet, and not being able to play was hard, but I understood why I couldn't. My family was so tense and tired. You could say the waves of life were more boisterous than ever. I felt like Peter. I had doubt that things would even get better. To get rid of skepticism and doubt that my family was having, we had to pray and have perseverance. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17 says, Pray without ceasing. And James 2 and 17 says, Faith without works is dead. My mom held these scriptures dear to heart while trying to get through our tough times. She shared them with us, and it gave us a different mindset. After a while, my brother started to feel better. He realized that he couldn't just pray. He had to believe what he was saying. He started to heal before there was a cure. He was having peace with the illness and knowing he would be fine. He no longer had skepticism and doubt that he would be healed, but he had a true gift. He had courage in tough times of suffering and inner strength. He was healed. That meant just as much as a cure. Not only was my brother healed, but my mom didn't have to worry about paying for Jasmine's wedding. We went to our church, First Assembly of North Little Rock, to talk to the secretary about how much it would cost for the church to use the wedding and reception and what the church weddings planner would charge. Our pastor, Rod Loy, came in on the conversation. Mom started to share with him everything that had been going on with our family. After she finished, Pastor Rod said, Do not worry about it. The church will take care of everything. It was so exciting to know how compassionate our church family was and how God used them to send us a blessing. I could only cry tears of joy because of what God was doing for my family. Right before school that year, my mom planned to get away from my family. We traveled to Galveston, Texas and stayed for three days. I couldn't wait to get on the beach. The first morning I had on the beach, I was there at 5.30. With everything that had went on in the months before, I wanted to just sit out on the beach and watch the waves. While I was out there, I had a sense of interconnectedness with the waves. Although it was calming to sit out on the beach, I knew that my life had been like the waves. I was watching the waves and was instantly taken on a semantic journey. Just it was as if I was out in the water on a boat watching Peter's story happen. God told Peter to come out on the water, and because of this, Peter should have known that God would take care of him while he was out there. I knew that was the way I had kept peace of mind when dealing with the waves of life.
as Roger Gottlieb said in his book Spirituality. After I went out and watched the natural waves, I was able to let the experience of nature bring me back to my essential self and let go of the skepticism and doubt.